right, guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday night at 7 o'clock, which means it is time for a Facebook Live video. And Facebook let me get over it? here and turn off my sound so I don't have to listen to myself because, oh my lord, I don't want to do that. All right, so hopefully we'll have some folks tonight. I suspect a lot of people are maybe trick-or-treating with their kids, and that's awesome. Hopefully everybody's going to have a good, safe evening. Hi, Karen. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Donna. Rosie. Hey, sis. How's it going? I'm going to grab a quick drink. We just got back from walking ourselves around the last time after feeding the horses, and we were humping it pretty good because Finn was on a mission with his bottle, and yesterday when we dawdled along, he laid down right outside the door and commenced to chewing the lid on the bottle. Hi, Pam. Hey, Bree. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Jewel. Windy in North Dakota. Is that unusual? I mean, I always thought North Dakota was always kind of windy. Maybe I'm mistaken. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Terry. Thank you. Happy Halloween to you as well. It's going to be a full moon, and as I understand, it's the second full moon, which makes it a blue moon. Uh, no, I will not break into song. All right, so let's go ahead and get started so you guys can get back to uh, passing out candy or taking your kids, if you like, whichever is on your list for this evening. I just realized my um, grid paper's upside down. Oh, well. Okay, so this is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning, and it is... Uh, uses some color blocking where you put ink on an acrylic block and then we're going to spritz it a little bit and we're going to make those um, blocks and then do some stamping. And then I have um, so a sentiment from, okay, so the pumpkins and the wheat are from Gather Together, one of my favorites. And then I used a sentiment from The Well Said and the die cut sentiment Thanksgiving from the Word Wishes dies, which is actually the coordinating set for the Well Said stamp set. Okay, so let's get started. Are you ready to rumble? Thank you. Blue moon. See, Debbie asked for it. She just she was begging me to sing it. Aren't you glad that's the only words I know? Yeah, I know you are. Okay, all of this will be on my blog, Tamale, so you do not even need to take notes. I've got some paper already cut. I'm using an early espresso cream wood and pumpkin pie palette. And then I have some of our um, sort of new, not really totally new, but, you know, in this catalog, the Fluid 100 watercolor paper, and that's what we're going to use to make our color blocking. So let's go ahead and do that first, because it has the highest percentage of possibility that I will mess it up, and we can also give it time to dry. Hey, Jean, appreciate you. And we're going to put our, this here, this here is a silicone sheet from way back. Not not one of ours, just a thing. Okay, this is a B block, so that is the size. And I'm going to use three colors. We're gonna use Cajun Craze, Pumpkin Pie, and Crushed Curry. All right, so let me show you how we're gonna do it. We'll see if I can do it. We'll see if I can do it. Okay, so you're gonna hold your block, and then you're gonna take the side that's opposite the uh, the finger hold. Okay, so you want that side because it's a little easier to control it. And we're just gonna tap, tap, tap the color on the block about a third of the way down. It's very technically measured right there. And then we're gonna do the same with the pumpkin pie. And then we'll do the last third in the crushed curry. Okay. And then we're going to take our Stampin' Spritzer. Hey, Angie. Appreciate you coming. And we're going to hold the block flat, okay? You really want to hold the block fl flat so that the water doesn't go all over the place unless that's the look you're looking for. And we're just going to give it a little spritz. And I'm going to set it straight down on my watercolor paper. I'm gonna hold it a beat and pick it up. That's a lot of water. I did I over spritzed, so don't do don't do that. I'll just I'm just gonna tap it up just a little bit. Otherwise it'll be a month of Tuesdays before this all dries. Okay. So then I'm gonna wipe it off and do it two more times. 
And you do want to wipe it off because otherwise it all starts to kind of run together and gets all muddy. Hey, Terry, it's kind of fun. Kind of a fun little technique. And we'll do Cajun Craze. Pumpkin pie. And you know, you can do almost any color combination. I did a card using this technique, oh, I don't know, four or five months ago. And used um, Pretty Peacock and Shaded Spruce. And that was very pretty too. And then we'll finish off with some crushed curry. I'm going to try to be a little more judicious with my water here. Okay, now what I want to do is I traded the orientation. Okay, so I had my yellow up here. I'm going to put my yellow down on this one, okay? And I want it right close to it, but just enough that it's separated. And try to keep it as straight as you can. And hold it a beat. Now, what's kind of cool about this is you really don't have to get, you can see it's probably going to be kind of splotchy, but that's okay. I, I don't really care because it's part of kind of the charm of this, this technique, right? You kind of want it to look different. However, I don't love the fact that I have made it too close to the edge. Why have I made it too close to the edge? Because I'm a dork, obviously. So I'm going to start it again. Which means we may be here until midnight at the rate I'm going. You know, they told me there'd be days like this. No. My mama told me there'd be days like this. Actually, it's not a big deal. It gives me more chances to, to do it and get it perfect. Perfect, I tells ya. Okay. So we'll start right here. I like watching it when you press it down, it goes like that. So many earworms. Yes, it is a bork day, that is correct. Okay, I'm not even gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna let that go for a minute. No, I can't stand it. I have to I have to daub that up a little bit. There we go. Okay. And I wiped it off. We're gonna start again. Here we go. One more time. One more time. Cajun craze. Pumpkin pie. Yeah, it is it is not the tidiest technique of faith. You need to have your little silicone thing and just be prepared for some mess to take place. You know what they say, mess happens. Mess happens. Okay, hold the, it flat. Give it a little spritz. And let's see, we want red up. So we'll give that a good push. I'm giving it a little bit of a wiggle. Okay. And it's really close again, isn't it? What in the world? What in the world am I doing? I know what I'm doing. I'm just being goofy. You know what I'm trying to do? Let's just be honest. I'm trying to do space saving, right? And paper saving. So why don't I just sacrifice an entire piece of watercolor paper and then we can get going. The good news is, after I get this done, it doesn't take very long. Okay. So, what not to do? You know what else I'm going to try? Just because what, what could possibly make it any worse than what I'm already doing? I'm going to put my pad under here. Maybe, that'll, maybe that, that'll probably fix it. That's the thing right there. Okay, here we go. Now, pretend I'm going into speed mode. That, that's speed mode. All right, and then cage crushed curry. And we'll spritz with our spritzers. Okay. And I'm just going straight up in the middle. To heck with it. To heck with it, I says to you. <laughs> I haven't had any candy corn, although I'm going to. That can that darn popcorn, Rosie, is so good. Oh, did you know? I don't know if I if you knew this, but there's kettle corn, candy corn, and caramel corn in there. I have only eaten the candy corn because it, it's, I can't not. I just can't not. Whenever I go in there, I go spelunking for the candy corn one, which means soon I'm going to reach the point where I'm not going to have any more candy corn ones. I'm going to be relegated to kettle corn and caramel corn, which is not a bad thing. But it's very, very tasty. Just saying. 
All right, here we go. And then let's see, we want red up. Oh, look at this. When you just resign yourself to using an entire piece of watercolor paper, miraculously, it works. There we go. Yeah, that'll be okay. It's, it's an inexact art. It's, uh, it's like I don't have my ear on the side of my head. It's on my nose. It's that kind of art. Real abstract. Real artsy. Okay. Pumpkin pie and crushed curry. Hey, what is this? Like the fifth time's a charm? Fifth time's a charm. Oh, I can't believe I said that before I actually stamped this one. What in the world? Stamping gods, I'm sorry. Don't ang be angry. All right, and we'll just set that down right there. Okay. Okay, I'll take it. Do a little daubing, and then we'll get the we'll get the heat tool to it a, a little tiny bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna close these because they are just danger. Combine popcorn with sugar. Absolutely. You know what's good about it is you know candy corn. When I was growing up. You know what? You remember making popcorn balls? That was candy corn to me. But this candy corn tastes like stinking candy corn. And it is really, uh, really good. I'm just saying. It is really, really good. Okay, let's get this mess cleaned up and get this out of my way before I have a ink, an incident. <laughs> oh, go on. I know you're laughing. Okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry and we'll do a little bit of stamping here on our little, oh yeah, mm -hmm. plain M&Ms and hot buttered pop. See, my husband would do that, but he would add peanut M&Ms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to take some early espresso and I am using the wheat image from Gather Together, all right? And we're going to stamp it off, and then I'm just going to stamp kind of all over this this piece of um, In Good Taste DSP. And there's not going to be any rhyme, nor nary any reason to what I'm stamping and which way I'm going. I'm just trying to kind of move it around a little bit so that we get some coverage all over. And of course we know that this is gonna go in the middle, so maybe we're not too head up about it. Or, or maybe we are, I don't know. Are we het? Should we be het? I don't know if we should be het or not het. All right, you guys know that this is your last day, right? To get this DSP on sale. Just throwing it out there. Wait, is this one on sale? No. Mary, you fool. You fool. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah, this one's on sale. No, this is World of Good. No, this one's not on sale. Sorry. You can't have it. Not tonight, not tomorrow night. You can't have it on sale. Nope, sorry. You know, if I was a really good demonstrator, I would have used a sale DSP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, I didn't. I used the one I wanted. So there you go. It looks like a chicken foot. No, no, no. It's wheat. See? It's wheat. But it might look like a chicken foot on camera. <laughs> Possibly it looks like a chicken foot on camera. But it isn't. It's wheat. It's wheat, I say. Okay. You step aside. And then we're going to adhere this with some liquid glue. Hey, Lynn. Appreciate you joining. Okay, Judy, this is one on sale. Okay, we have a, we have it definitive. I'm going to look at the flyer. Let me see. Oh, yeah. No? Yep. Yep, this is. It's in good taste. I always get myself mixed up world of good, and I don't know why, because it's totally different, but it is in good taste, and it is on sale, so yes, tonight is, in fact, the last night that you can get it on sale. Thank you, ma'am. All right, and then I'm putting this on a pumpkin pie mat. 
like so. Okay. Now, our watercolor image has had a few minutes to dry. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take my heat tool on the low setting and just give it a little bit of a bump. Just a little bit. Isn't that pretty how those all go together like that? I think that's so pretty. And the thing that's cool is it's different every time you do it. So you every single card, if you did four cards like this, um, yes, I will absolutely salvage that watercolor. <laughs> paper yes okay so what I'm going to do with this one though is I'm going to tear the edges so I'm going to tear myself a art panel and I'm just going eyeballing it it's certainly not very accurate but I'm just kind of going right along the top of the image and here's a little tip about tearing when you tear pick a direction and by that, I mean either a tear towards you like this or tear away from you like that because it changes. You see how the edge looks different on this side than it does on that side? It, it looks different. So pick a direction and go that way. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep going all the way around. This uh, watercolor paper tears quite nicely, really. Um, it, it tends to stay pretty straight, which is nice. So just take your time with it. And we'll get it off of there and then we'll stamp it a little bit. We'll do a little bit of stamping on it. And I'm gonna do some masking tonight. And I've already got a whole bunch of sticky note masks. And I think I've said this before, once you build sticky note masks for a stamp set that you think might be routinely used, then save them, okay? So I've got all of my gather together mats, little sticky note mats all over the place here. And are they as sticky as they were when I first made them? No, but they still do the job. Okay. So what my plan is here is I'm going to add some pumpkins and wheat on these two, and then I'm going to have my sentiment be roughly right there. And this is my sentiment. It's Thanksgiving, and it's from the Word Wishes set. Okay, so I'm going to put it over here like so, and I'm going to stamp the word happy right about there. Okay, so I'm, gonna cha I'm changing up the, the design just a little bit on this one, just because I can and because it's my card. Okay, now let me tell you about this. This is, um, I put a piece of um, early espresso cardstock on foam adhesive, and I cut it out. And then I also cut a separate um, brushed metallic cardstock one, and I'm going, to, I'm going to adhere this with liquid glue to this one. Here's why I didn't just put the foam adhesive on the back of this. With these little intricate die cuts, the foam adhesive can be a little persnickety, right? Because it's got all these little hanging chads in there that you have to get out. And you tend to have to get them out with a pokey thing. And if you get too busy with a pokey thing with the any of the metallics, either the foil or the cardstock, it can, it can kind of mar it. So it's not very difficult. We, I mean, we used to do stacks of dies, die cuts for sentiments all the time, so it's not very difficult to do that once. But by using the foam adhesive, I get a bump in my, um, I only have to do the two layers instead of like seven to get that deep. Okay, so that's, that's my plan. There's my plan, Stan. So let us get some pumpkins and our early espresso. Here we go. Yeah, the watercolor paper is pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to use this dual pumpkin and I'm gonna stamp it off once and then I'm gonna stamp it right there. And then I'm gonna cover it with my, and I'm gonna get my little mat. I want my mat for this. But I wanna clear off that mat. There we go, okay. So I've got my little um, mask on there, and now I'm gonna take my big pumpkin, same set, different pumpkin, stamp it off, and we'll stamp it 
right there like that and then I think I'll add another mask and I'll add some of the chicken feet I mean the wheat sheaves also stamped off once and when you're doing this you gotta be thinking about where your where the end is I don't have enough mat to hide that so I wanted to clear it off and I'm gonna let it go outside the watercolor okay like that so there's the first image and then I think we'll do uh, you know what let's put this mat back like this and you know this masking it can be different however you want now this time all I did was I just inked right to there okay because that's really all I'm gonna see anyway so uh, there was no point in inking the whole thing and then wiping it down so then I'm gonna come like this okay and then I'm gonna stick my die back hi Belinda appreciate you joining from Washington all right so we'll go ahead and put that in and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment my stamped sentiment so that then I have an idea of how much further um, I have to go without you know messing it up okay so I'm gonna stamp happy in early espresso and I'm gonna do a little check here okay it's pretty straight it'll be okay and I'm gonna put it right here right there in that little and I'm gonna hold it a beat there we go okay and then Thanksgiving is gonna go here so you know what? I'm going to put another pumpkin patch over here. So, where are you pumpkins? There you are. Okay. We'll go a little double pumpkin there. And I'm going to put it a little higher. Like that. And we'll put our pumpkin mask over top. And get a little more wheat. Hi, Stella. Hey, Sandra, thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate you joining. And then we're going to go, I'm going to let it go over onto the sentiment square. Like that. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm making an inked collage, right? Okay. Now I'm going to see where my, how my sentiment looks. And I might put, my brain is telling me that I might want the wheat right here. I think I'm gonna do that because I can. Because what's the worst that'll happen? I go, gosh, I wish I hadn't put that wheat there. Okay, but I'm gonna let it come in from the outside just like that. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Faith. <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay, sorry, sorry. I just had to get all excited there for a second. Okay, Matt out of the way, saving sticky notes. All right. Okay, now, now, one other little tip about the foam adhesive sheets. This is the stickiest stuff ever, which is awesome when you're trying to stick down your sentiment, but it's, it's kind of persnickety to work with it. I am not going to fib you at all. So, you know, just take your time, try to keep your, your big old mitts off it as much as you can. Um, but I wanted to get that. I've got one hanging Chad that just didn't want to come out. So I want to grab him. Like that. Well, he's not going to come out. And you know, I don't actually think if it was if it was left in there that it would be that big of a deal. I really don't. But it looks like it's kind of come out. Okay. So now we're going to... We're going to... And just kind of lay it on your card stock until you see where it's gonna go. And then you, then you can kind of play with it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Try to pick this up and give it a little straightening. A 
little straightening. We're gonna straighten it right up a little bit. Okay, 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 I like it. Now, watch what happens when you add the metallic to it. It's so pretty. Hey, Pam, appreciate you joining. Both Pams, we got two Pams. Okay, so now I'm just taking the very littlest bit, and I mean, I'm practically just thinking about putting it glue on here, okay? And I'm just kind of squishing it around a little bit. You can't, you may be not even able to see the glue hardly. See, I mean, there's really hardly any glue. We got to remember this glue is the, is, is a little dabble do you personified, okay? And then you're just going to start at one end and start lining up your die cut on the original die cut. Just like that. And remember, it's just paper and glue, people. Don't be scared of it. Make it do what you want it to do. There we go. Perfect. I'll take it. I'll take that for a dollar, Bob. I don't know what that's from. Okay, so let me close this up. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals to pop this onto the card front like a sew, and these are minis, so I'm justified in using extras. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You guys, Sean Connery, goodness. That one really hit me today. I don't, I, don't, I mean, I, I'm always kind of sad when some of those folks that we've watched, you know, our whole lives die, but for some reason that one really got me. I liked him, so I'm hoping he's Driving a fast Aston Martin and drinking martinis, shaken, not stirred. I did read in it in like a biography thing today, you know, online, so whatever that's worth, that he had gotten pretty tired of Bond because he was afraid he was going to be typecast. But my goodness, he was like the perfect Bond. Although, as I read, he certainly did not grow up that way. He was desperately poor in Scotland and... Um, he worked really, really hard, really, really hard, and made quite the success of himself. So, you have to be impressed by that. Okay, now do not drop that and stick it where you don't want it, as it were. And then we're just going to stick this right on the front like so. Then I'm going to take a length of my braided linen trim. And an acorn. 90, I know, I know, I know. My brother sent me a cool picture that had been photoshopped. You know, he was, um, it showed him leaning up against one of the Astons that he drove in one of the bonds. And somebody had photoshopped it to look like it, he was in heaven, which, uh, you know, he, he might have some things to atone for, I don't know. But then he sent it again and said, as if the original picture wasn't epic enough, and it was him, it looked like in Scotland against the same car, so the the background that they had photoshopped out looked like the uh, the wilds of Scotland or maybe the wilds of Ireland. I, I'm not real sure, but it was it was quite beautiful, and he was looking hot, just saying. Good-looking dude, good-looking car, good-looking place. It was a good picture. It was really, all in all, a very good picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've just got me a bow of dubious quality, and I'm just going to adhere it right there. But I got to fix those little loopies. Got to fix those little loopies. Because I don't like them. I didn't like the loopies. The loopies weren't right. He was a bodybuilder, yes. Mm -hmm. And it pretty much showed. And, you know, they kept talking about him being hard as nails and I mean he was like he was pretty well perfect as James Bond my first James Bond was Roger Moore I saw the spy who loved me was my first ever exposure to James Bond and so that was what I that was kind of my litmus but boy you know what the first time you see Sean as Bond well and of course the they had to point out the fact that he would not at all, this was not at all good because 
many of the sex scenes were borderline non-consensual and he was always slapping somebody on the butt and well that was the character and it was the 60s that's what things that's what happened then all right so there is our card front i did give some thought to some metallic pearls and then i thought nope i'm leaving it just like this so we're going to do the inside and on the inside, I am going to locate my pad. Here it is. Okay. Are you ready? Because I didn't mess up the watercoloring quite enough. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay. Hopefully only one more time. You know what? What we're going to do here is no matter how this turns out, we're taking it. Okay. All right. Have I ever seen Sean in a bad picture? Excellent point. Nope, the camera really, really liked him quite a bit. All right, so I'm going to do my same exact setup, Cajun Craze. Don't worry, guys, this is, in theory, the last time I have to, I'm going to be doing this, so the last time you have to watch. Oh, my stamp sets are going everywhere. And then some pumpkin pie. And then some crushed to curry. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. I know I've made this look like a very hard thing to do, but it's not, it really isn't. Trust me, this was a, this was a technique I was kind of scared of um, until we did it at a team meeting uh, six months or so ago. Okay, I've got some water on there and I'm going to put it right in the middle of my inner liner, which is just a piece of very vanilla. Hunt for Red October, oh yes. Yes, okay, and there's that. So I'm gonna close these for a second while it's kind of drying. And we're gonna give it a little bump. No light, no, with our Low setting, you know, on the, if you have the Stampin' Up! heat tool, you have two settings. Low is for drying, like I'm doing now, and then want high is for heat embossing. Yes, yes, he was always so tongue-in-cheek, right? He was just, he was the kind of guy that, yeah, I'm sorry. If I was a swooner, I would have swooned. If he'd come at me like he did in some of those movies, I'd have swooned, not going to lie. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is dry enough. And now I'm going to take, uh, let me show you where we're headed here so you can see. We're gonna make an inside collage, right, like that. So first I'm going to put my sentiment, and this one is from Gather Together. And I'm gonna use um, Early Espresso, and I'm gonna kind of offset it off of the block a little bit. Make sure it's as straight as I can make it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some Cajun Craze. Nope. You know, I've, this is very interesting. I've been using Cherry Cobbler this whole time and calling it Cajun Craze. Y'all do this with Cajun Craze. I think it'll be better. It looks just fine with Cherry Cobbler, but do it with Cajun Craze. You'll like it better. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this big pumpkin and I'm gonna put it off to the side like that. And then I'm going to take my crushed curry. I'm gonna wipe out my, uh, wipe off my wheat. And I'm not going to do any um, masking, so I'm just gonna let it kind of go because it just really kind of disappears inside there. Like that. There we go. I like it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Earworm number three. Yes, we turn our clocks back. Darn it. Anyway, uh, I hate standard time. It's going to be dark like two hours ago. Uh, uh, I thought they were going to fix that. I thought I had heard that they were going to make it so that we didn't have to go back and forth and forth and back and hither and yon and to and fro but apparently they couldn't get off their butts quick enough to do it. We have way too many more important things to worry about than whether we're killing ourselves trying to stay. I read somebody was, getting, was wanting to make it because 
they figured people would deal with COVID better if they had it light longer in the day. I don't know if that's true. I just know I hate standard time. Okay, so now we'll put it inside our early espresso card base. husband went to see it with me. Do you like Sean Connery? Uh, which movie? Cynthia, which, I must have missed which movie you saw that you didn't, that you were mad about. I didn't see that. All right. Put this in here. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving card. And actually, I'm, I'm digging it. And look at the difference. It's interesting. Look at the difference. <clears throat> Just a little bit, same exact concept, but the change of one color, one, and I love it. I love them both. I'm not even going to lie. I love them both. I couldn't even tell you which one was better. Hunt for Red October. Okay, so why were you mad about it? I just have to ask. I thought it was kind of interesting, and I mean, I know they kind of had to do it, and I didn't want to listen to Russian and read subtitles the whole way, but it seemed kind of weird to me that a Russian sub crew would all be speaking British English. But, you know, that's just me. <laughs> so, okay. All right, so I'm going to put this on with some more dimensionalities. If one dimensional is good, 9 or 20 is better. That's my theory. Yes. Well, I want them to pick something, too, and stick with it, but I want them to pick Daylight Save. Oh. <coughs> he went without you. Yeah, that was rude. Got to get a drink. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> I will have to say that in um, if you've read the books, um, Alec Baldwin was really not my pictured Jack Ryan. But Sean Connery was absolutely <laughs> perfect as the sub commander. He absolutely was. He was hot. He's... He was hot as an old dude, really serious. Have you seen any pictures of him in his Scottish kilt? Uh, not everybody can pull off a skirt, just saying, but he can. All right, so there we go. There's our card, Dunske. And now I'm going to take my um, very vanilla envelope. There you go. I'm sure that it is available everywhere right now. Probably in more places than you can even begin to imagine. You can see any Sean Connery show you want to see. All right, so let's see. I'm going to wipe off my double pumpkins here. And we're going to put the doubles down here in pumpkin pie. Okay. And cover it with a mask. Like I said, once you fussy cut a few masks, you're going to want to keep them. Just saying. And then we'll get, um, now I'm going to grab my mat back. Why am I doing that? Because when you have a mat, especially behind the um, photopolymers, you can get a little less, uh, you know, sometimes when you have a mask, there's a gap that you can't hardly get past. But if you've got your mat, it seems to reduce that. Okay, we'll just go right here, like that. Uh, oh, double mask, there we go. And then we'll get a double mask back. Or no, single mask. I've already got a double mask on there. Hello, hello, McFly. Thank you, Michelle. You should try it. You do have the patience because it doesn't take nearly as long if you don't screw up the first 12 attempts at the color blocking, then it goes pretty fast. And if you make your uh, mats and hang on to your mats, then you don't even have to do that. Aren't you glad I, you know, didn't make you watch me make mats? Yeah. All right, so let's see what we got here. We'll put a couple of little pieces of wheat. Get back down there. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. And that is all for that. And look at this. I love it. When you pick the mat. This is as fun as embossing for me. You pick up the mat, the mask, and all of a sudden they are just marching along behind like good little pumpkin soldiers. Okay. Last little bit. Leave room for the address. No, no, no. Address, schmadress. We don't need no stinking address. You ever mailed something without an address? Just so you know, it doesn't go anywhere. Never gets, never comes back. Never gets there. Never gets back. It's not good. You shouldn't do it. Mm -mm. Nope. Shouldn't do it. All right, here we go. Let's get this. Give this a quick fussy cut. It's not really fussy. A quick, not so fussy cut. And then because I can never leave well enough alone, I'm just ignoring that ink right there, just so you know. Ignoring it completely. What ink? I don't even know what you're talking about. What ink? I'm going to take my chicken feet again and my early espresso. And this time I'm not stamping it off. I'm just stamping right smack on the edge of my cardstock like that, my DSP. There, just like that. All right, and that, as they say in the biz, I don't know which biz, but the biz, is that. So there we go, one Thanksgiving card with color blocking, okay? So inking, spritzing, stamping, and then you can stamp over the top of it. Don't forget the tear of the edges theory. That's always a good one. And on the inside. All right, guys, I appreciate you putting up with me. Oh my goodness, 45 minutes. I'm so sorry to take up so much time for you tonight, but I appreciate you sticking with me and I hope you will try these techniques. Please don't be intimidated. It's pretty darn easy. And it's just paper. What's the worst that can happen? All right, guys, we'll see you on Thursday on our, oh, you know, uh, yeah, you know what? We will see you on Thursday because all of our onstage starts Thursday. It doesn't start until the evening. So I will have time to do a video with y'all on Thursday and I hope you will join me. I'll be on my YouTube channel. Y'all have a great rest of your weekend. Don't forget to set those clocks back, fall back. All right, bye guys.